The next talk is by Shamila Nasotzi about satellite imagery for social good, our reflections. Shamila, the stage is yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. I am Shamila Nasazi, and I work with the Eastern and Southern Africa Hub, Humanitarian Open Mapping Hub, as the Data Quality Associate. Um, I'm really excited to share with you all about the Satellite Imagery for Social Good project. It is a combination of efforts from very many uh, people. We've, you know, I'll just dive into all, all that later. Thank you. And so, just a brief background on um, on this project. In 2019, uh, we had a project pilot uh, in Uganda and Tanzania, while we're trying to see how we could use and utilize the AI-assisted uh, buildings that was generated from the by Microsoft, and how this data could actually potentially be added to OpenStreetMap uh, in a you know an open mapping way that be acceptable by the community. We tried uh, several methods, one by trying to just get all the buildings, maybe work with them in JOSM, use the conflation tool and upload. Then we also tried uh, RAPID at the time and um, we were able to compare both methods and we actually realized that there was an increase in the output or the buildings mapped by mappers uh, per day where we had actually pretty much doubled uh, the number of buildings people could map every day. Then uh, come 2022, Microsoft released uh, another data set for Nigeria and Kenya. And again, we tried to work with the communities in Nigeria and in Kenya, the OSM communities. And um, just a brief on the, on the project workflow, one well, started by first defining areas of interest to be mapped. Now, why is this important? Because I mentioned again the bit on imagery for social good. So I really wanted to see at least choose an area that could actually potentially have a good data use case for the community. And um, from this, we actually also had to do, we did assessment of existing OSM data and had to choose the best available imagery that we could, uh, that we could use. And after that, we set up the project in a tasking manager and uh, had several trainings with a mapper that we're going to work with. And then we started the mapping. That was in January of this year. So the AI assisted mapping, um, how you could uh, potentially use this data. I, I know in the community people have already shared various ways you could uh, use the OSM, sorry, the Microsoft buildings. Uh, I know uh, Martin shared about how you can use MapRelay Relay for that. Someone, they just released another blog, sorry, well, no SM diary uh, recently, still describing another method. And uh, this is another potential way you could use it. So one, right now the tasking manager actually already has a rapid added as an editor. So if you are a project manager and you're setting up your project, you can actually just enable the rapid editor so your mappers can potentially use uh, the AI data set. Or, or else, if you're still using JOSM, you can utilize the map with AI plugin. Now, some of the things that we really liked about the AI assisted mapping one, um, there was better geometry accuracy and uh, in most of the places. I know there have been some controversies in some areas not really being well done, but at least um, honestly on a larger scale, it was better accuracy. And then, of course, it made mapping much faster for most for everyone, like I already shared earlier. And we also had improved, realized improved uh, data quality from the project. Some of the key uh, projects that, yes, we had over 180 contributors to this project. Much as we had a dedicated team uh, in both Kenya and Nigeria of around 30 mappers, but through the different events that we had, the mappathons, training sessions, we get to have extra people actually inter interacting with the project and contributing and also um, supporting in, the, in their own way. Um, from Nigeria, we're able to map uh, Bauchi State and Gombe State. And in total, we actually mapped uh, two states because people are still mapping. We've mapped over 1.8 million building footprints in Nigeria and 1.3 million building footprints in Kenya. 
in Kenya, for, for my Kenyans in the room, we mapped uh, Nakuru and Nakuru County. I'll dive a bit more into it as well. Uh, why we chose the Nakuru County. So Nakuru is restricted in population and uh, it's a growing city as well. And in Nakuru, um, besides the mapping that we've done, we can see um, the really cool gift my <laughs> colleague created. We were able to engage um, the Nakuru County officials in availing them with this data that, so that they could use it in their, um, in their work and both the planning uh, for the city. Here, we, besides the mapping, the county officials were also involved in the mapping. And we also did uh, some mapillary work to collect street level imagery that could be used uh, for their flood resilience planning. To mention, but a few, just being aware of time. And um, in Nigeria, uh, over here you will see Bauchi State. Bauchi is really, really big. When we started mapping, we thought maybe because uh, we actually kicked off the Nigeria a bit much later, but uh, like I mentioned, faster mapping, we're actually able to map the 1.8 buildings in this uh, in this state and you can see uh, from here you can see the before and after the mapping and uh, impressive work that the team was able to do uh, and, and besides mapping we'll be going beyond the map uh, we we're also able to um, involve stakeholders like the Bauchi State Primary Healthcare Development Agency who is going to use this building footprints to both of their micro planning for routine immunization in the state and we're also able to create information products like, um, like an interactive map, an interactive view map. Uh, you can see the, the link uh, that down below. And also generate maps that could be used um, by these healthcare providers. And on top of that, we also had other people who may not necessarily be OSM contributors right away, like the GIS planners and other key stakeholders being trained on GIS tools and how to use OpenStreetMap. Now, well, did you know, but you probably already know it could be old news, like four months old, but <laughs> after this, Microsoft actually also released um, building footprints for other countries. So you can see that um, on top of the ones that they had released earlier, you can see that they've generated and created, availed more, more building footprints to be used. And when I saw this, I was really just thinking, so how can other people try to maybe benefit from this, or how do we actually try to improve this? On the other side, we also have a snapshot from OSM Analytics, which just shows the current um, building density in OSM. And I think we can see where the, where the gaps are. And um, I feel like this actually just avails us, um, like, oh, no, sorry, uh, the word is lost. But yes, there's an opportunity for us here to utilize these buildings and um, at least improve the base map in Africa and other countries, and other continents. So in case you're interested in trying to do this, uh, the team, as we were mapping, people are always sharing, like providing feedback on how to, maybe how this could actually be improved, what they've been finding and things like, so we actually just try to summarize a little bit of everything for you in case you're going to set this up. The first one, Rapid and map with AI is great because it already does the conflation for you. And uh, for those, if you don't know that conflation is really just trying to compare the new AI building and what's already existing in OSM. So what it's actually going to do is going to, it will not suggest a building that actually already exists in OSM. So this way we avoid duplication and erasing uh, already existing data. However, you will find that in cases where we have, um, where we have imagery or sets, uh, for instance, this, this snapshot is from Lesotho, and we discovered that in case in places where maybe mapping had actually already been done, but there was an offset maybe with the with the Bing imagery, the the AI would still suggest that you use uh, that building. So in this case, so you need to at least if you're training your mappers, you need to be wary of this and make sure you caution them on this. The other thing we also noted is, um, of course, undetected buildings due to cloud cover. I mean, if you can't see anything, 
there was really nothing there. So mappers in this case had to actually go ahead and try to digitize these buildings manually and not use, because there was no predicted building. Then uh, we also noted overlapping buildings and many buildings mapped as one. So this was mostly in areas that, uh, as you can see, like quite dense, um, like the slum areas, or even places where the building rooftop was similar to the ground. The AI would just assume maybe it's one building and people had to either split the predicted building and use it in that sense, or actually not use it at all and actually have to just draw uh, stress one again. Then the false positives. Um, we would get comments coming in in the group chat. Hey guys, uh, you know, this is actually also mapping cars. It's mapping uh, farmlands as buildings. So if someone who doesn't know this place might maybe not realize that uh, may think maybe it's a warehouse or um, like a very big building, but this is, these are farmlands. But um, yeah, just very like, sorry, very unlikely, but it's just in a few cases it actually could come up and then you would see some of these. So things like buildings, sorry, cars, um, farmlands, and, and others like that. This was in Kenya. Then true negatives. So these, is, these are ideally buildings that have not been mapped by the AI. So we've noticed that in most cases it was for huts, uh, maybe in rural areas where you find um, like around buildings that have not been digitized and not been predicted by the AI. So in this case, we had to actually just manually draw these ourselves. And so, okay, after all that uh, talk, some of the things that we really like, in case, you, in case you're planning to check this on and to, to use this, if you're going to use the rapid editor, the first thing we notice it's really a great tool, especially for training new mappers, because it allows mappers to, much as you're using the predicted building, it also allows to just work with one building at a time. And then these are buildings that actually already have presets added. So those of us that know some of the data quality issues that sometimes come in from ID, it's already tagged, so the mapper doesn't have to worry about tagging. Then it's already drawn. Maybe you just have to trace and rotate uh, for alignment to make sure it aligns with the imagery. And yeah, a very long list for JOSM. If you're going to use the MAPIT AI plugin in JOSM, the first thing, you need to have experienced mappers using this one, okay? And um, with this, because you need to have good experience of using the JOSM editor, so expert mode, yeah, check. And uh, make sure that um, you necessarily need to worry about if people have done imports before or, you know, try to work with large assets, because you can easily use this, because if you're going to use the tasking manager, you would still, you would still demarcate and have smaller areas to work with, where people can just download AI data in that square and uh, work with that and then upload it. People also need to, your mappers need to learn how to use JOSM filters, because this comes because as you download the map with AI data in JOSM with a plugin, it will bring you both buildings and roads. So if you have a project that only needs buildings, People need to know how to use filters so they can only just select the buildings or select the roads. And um, the other one is your mappers also need to be skilled with, you know, mapping buildings. So if you missed Sharon's talk on advanced JOSM mapping earlier, you might need to contact her or even reach out to some of us to support you on how to do this because we've noticed that the things like much of the geometry is great. You might need to rotate buildings. You may need to adjust some of the edges. And, and things like that. So if you can use some of the JOSM editing shortcuts and you know the more tools from the utils plugin would really be great. So you need to make sure you teach your mappers how to do this. And um, the other thing is people need to also know how to deal with building relations because we noticed that the AI, the AI are building, some of the relations were wrong. And if someone did not know how to deal with OSM relations earlier, they, they may not be able to actually map uh, the buildings that needed relations. Then, of course, uh, our one that we cannot uh, fail to talk about is learning how to deal with conflict. So the conflict here is um, in case you're maybe working with a building that maybe had like extra information and now you're trying to maybe compare it with another one. 
So we, Sharon also shared a bit about how to transfer like OSM history from, a, from one building to another. So all these different things have to be factored in. And of course, again, imagery offsets, which we already talked about, and um, of course, validating. So with, so with the validation, we noticed that it's actually um, some, some mappers preferred validating the AI data layer before adding it to the OSM data. And others would just actually add and then validate everything at once. But of course, we had to do validation before we uploaded. And some actually didn't notice that they were spending some good time really validating the AI data as compared to, you know, maybe some really fast ones thought they could just actually have drawn and moved on. And yes, thank you very much for listening. So you can follow more of um, the work. You can follow the ESA socials and learn more about our work. Thank you. Thank you for your talk, Shamila. Um, I see no questions in Venueless, but are there any questions in the audience? Thank you for the presentation. So I was interested in the uh, satellite imaginary. So you said so some picture is covered by a cloud. So it is uh, it's uh, it's difficult to the judge the building one or something. So the how late the uh, perfect picture or not. So it, so do you know what I mean? Mm, sorry, how how? Um. So how how many pictures is uh like how many percent the is uh picture are uh, uh covered by in a cloud or not? So I I want I, I want to I want to know that how how how. How many picture, how many percent, something. Yes, um, I answer that right away then. Okay. So for we noticed it wasn't very common. We just found like a few areas because I know even the Microsoft team as well extracting these buildings, they must have considered all, all that as well to try to reduce cloud cover and things like that. But we just saw that in most of the areas where we had uh, that cloud cover, especially on the Bing imagery, there were no buildings that had been detected. That. Next question over there. Yes, thank you. Very interesting presentation. I'm uh, very fond of uh, well, this uh, way to, 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 to map, finally, that make earn a lot of time. Um, I'm Clement from Open Indoor and uh, focused on indoor uh, topics. And so have you also have a try about uh, um, indoor data, not very um, specific, but I mean um, deeper in a building or maybe in a, in some places with uh, some um, elements inside, like uh, rooms or uh, uh, parking places or some stuff like that. Yes, have we? So in, in some of the areas, uh, we actually noticed that sometimes the AI would pick maybe like a parking space as a building. And for utilization, we try to pair this with um, mapillary imagery as well. So mapillary, like street level imagery, to just add uh, more detail to the buildings. Yes. Next question. Still, yeah. still, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Um, quick question. Can you walk us through a little bit about potential maintenance strategy? So I know you mentioned um, you had something like 180 plus mappers. You taught them how to. You taught them where they volunteered. Um, how are you kind of planning to maintain this? And you also mentioned some struggles with conflict. Uh, so just curious from a from a maintenance perspective, if you have any plans. Could you please go again? I... It was a little bit difficult to understand. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, hello. <laughs> So uh, I'm curious about your maintenance strategy, if if you have one. You mentioned you had uh, 180 plus mappers who were helping, and then also uh, that you had some struggles with conflicts with regard to to, to the data you were getting. Um, can you walk us through if you if you've thought about it yet, uh, kind of longer term, how you expect to maintain this data? Uh, thank you. So on the maintaining the data and the strategy we're having right now. So we realize that much of this project is coming to an end, but we do see the opportunity in different communities actually trying to create projects in the task team manager and trying to complete the map uh, in their country. So we're really just trying to share and train more people on how to use uh, Map with AI, because we really see it as a way of advancing and supporting people in mapping. 
So that's one. And uh, so with this, we're going to create, um, we plan to host different several mappathons uh, during the year and as we continue as well, and having different mapping campaigns to just support uh, different communities to, to map. And for the conflicts, yes, uh, like I shared, so people need to just learn how to use so not I hope it like OSM conflicts, maybe when you're like you know trying to compare something new with what's already existing OSM. So of course we'd always keep and maintain uh, the OSM data as compared to the new one. That was like a one quick way to resolve those. Yeah. So we have one question from Vendiola. What do you think is the future of mapping using imagery? <laughs> Which means will drone taking over satellite imagery? Will? Will drone taking over satellite imagery? Hmm, I think drone imagery is honestly a plus and uh, I really see it as a way to just get more uh, high resolution imagery that we can use. We've seen that in places, for instance, we have, much as we have like available like being imagery or Maxi imagery, we saw that if people actually could go out and get their own imagery and maybe use these building footprints as well, it's just a, it's a plus, it's more updated. You can maybe use the um, the predicted building that you could just try to add. It's a bit more recent as compared to maybe just working with much older imagery. So the future, yes, looks bright, I would say. And <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I think people should actually just you know try to um, use this. Yes, ma'am. Next question. Hi, Shamil. Hi. Uh, so. I guess, let's see. And my question is more about how the satellite companies are willing to keep supporting OSM because we know sometimes and the mappers that they are in situ, they see that the image, I mean, it has been like maybe released five years ago, eight years ago, comparing to what is happening today in this area, especially in areas in the ones, I mean, they are building new cities like uh, so, so, so rapidly. So what are the companies willing to do for support humanitarian work? Um, is there any change in regarding the phrase of the data to be open data for supporting humanitarian purposes? Um, I would say, uh, I think when I, when you mentioned that, I was just thinking about the starting keynote on the role of corporate partners in OSM. And I, I would say that I see it as a way of, we need this data, much as it, it could be old, maybe actually like from so many years ago, but you see the gaps that we have. It's a starting point, honestly. If we have this, at least we can have this. It's not like we're not going to, we're going to turn all the things to map because it's a, just a start. Have this building footprints. Maybe then we can go on pick, uh, PO points of interest. I was going to say POIs, points of interest, collect street level imagery and uh, just, you know, complement that. So I really see it as a way of, we, if we have more partners actually getting involved, sharing their data and seeing how we can enrich OSM, it's a plus for us. Any other questions? That's a question. Yeah, an issue with uh, collaborating over various sources of imagery is, of course, the offsets, which can be uh, conflicted. Um, uh, have you seen uh, initiatives um, to add control points, survey points? Uh, to facilitate uh, the imagery offsetting and reduce the conflict between contributors using different imagery. Yes. Yes. So with uh, supporting on, on resolving imagery offset issues, one of the things we've really been trying to do is try to get maybe utilizing um, street level imagery like Mapillary. I know there's a plugin that you can use to help with offsetting those, even Strava, some of the GPS track from, um, from this app have been one of the key things that we've really been using to offset imagery. But um, honestly, I, th I feel like the imagery offset uh, discussion is, is quite deep uh, in the community right now, but those are some of the things we've been doing to help with that. Yes. And sharing the office as well. I have one last question. Are there areas where the AI recognition is so bad that it's still faster to trace the buildings manually? No. No. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> no, we didn't find, we didn't find any. <laughs> yes. Uh, so thank you for your, for your attention.